Hey there, I'm Ken with the Shop Mini RC, and we get a question all the time in the Facebook groups. How do you take this and get this? How do you get four-wheel steering on a rig? And so today, we're gonna dive into that. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with pretty much the easiest solution here, and that is a stock rig, or at least close to stock. Obviously, the first thing you're gonna need is another front axle. You can't do four-wheel steering without another front axle. That's the whole thing, and you can even use a stock servo. So basically, just get a front axle, full assembly with servo, and you're good to go. The stock electronics, whether it's version one or version two, can handle it just fine. Now, there are other options, but we're gonna start with this one. So here we have our decased receiver. And you can see that our rear steer servo is just plugged into our channel three. It's as simple as that. You're plugged in, you got your stock remote. All you gotta do is rear steer channel three. It's this little button right up here in the corner, the switch. And you can uh, do a full control rear steer. Now there are some issues that may arise and it depends on the servo you're using and the servo horns. I will tell you that this servo horn, actually, was it this one? No, the stock servo horn. I'd, Either way, one of the servo horns had issues. I think it was actually the stock servo with this uh, white servo horn. Was that it? It's because this rig has rear wheel steer or behind the axle steering that things got switched up. Originally, we were using one of these guys on the rear. And the reason is when you don't have, on channel three on the remote, you don't have trim. So what can end up happening is your rear steer will be slightly off. You'll be trimmed a little bit to the left or right, which means while you're driving forward, you kind of have a natural crab, rock, crab walk, which is not good. The answer to that is to make sure you get your servo horn centered as much as possible. So you'll turn everything on, make sure your channel three is set to the center, and then you'll adjust your servo horn until it's center. With the regular servo and regular steering set, set up, not this behind the axle steering, you'll actually be off just a little bit. And so you constantly are a little turned, at least with the Emacs servo and servo horn. Now, if you're using a different servo and servo horn, it's gonna change. But one of the solutions is to use the cross. Whoop. And you can basically set this on there and try each position until you find one, because they're all a little bit different, until you find the one that is as close to center as possible. And with the Emacs, this one definitely has one that completely centers. Um, and so that'll get you your center. And then you just cut off the remaining uh, sides and you just have your single white servo horn. Um, the only other solution to try to fix that is different length steering bars, the uh, steering linkage. If you, if you can't get it to center with the uh, servo horn, you'll have to get different length steering linkages and try to find one that makes it work. But you should be able to, especially if you've got one of these, okay? If you're interested in our decased ESC here, we'll put a link up in the corner. Um, it's a video just showing how we decase it. It gives you a lot more space, also lowers your center of gravity. Uh, that case is probably heavier than you would expect. And we also show how to remove the power and motor wires in case you're using an aftermarket ESC and you're using this as receiver only since your uh, ESC is gonna power your motor and uh, take in power from your battery. Anyway, check it out, it's over here. And this also works with the version two electronics. So here we've got our Bronco. We went ahead and just plugged another servo into our stock receiver and that's in channel three. And then channel three is right here on the remote. So you can see our servo. We'll do left, center and right. The only downside to this is that it is also attached to your light function. So if you're using your light function, which is the, um, the head, I believe. Yeah, the head on this. Any lights plugged into head are gonna switch with that channel as well. So that's unfortunate. But this receiver does have a lot more features than the old receiver as far as uh, channel three and four is concerned. So we can't really complain. But again, rear wheel steering, if you've got something plugged into your heads, it will flash. Unless you plug it in in a way, you can basically plug your lights in uh, so they're not in the signal. You just put them straight to the red and black and uh, you'll have to experiment with it. But basically move it up and down or flip it around and uh, within your headlight channel and it'll just stay on permanently. As long as your, you know, as long as your receiver is on, the lights will just stay on permanently. And then you don't have to worry, and fla worry about them flashing while you're using the rear steer. But it's that simple. It's as simple as plugging it into channel three and getting it centered, right? So getting it centered may be the hardest part. And it's not even really that hard if you have the Emacs servo with the extra horns or just some extra horns laying around uh, that fit the servo you're trying to use and you have a couple options. Either way, get creative with it if you start to have issues getting it centered. And uh, like I said, that's probably the hardest part. 
So the most ideal situation is that you have an aftermarket transmitter that can handle mixing. And what mixing is, is it's able to take multiple channels and control them from a single switch or, you know, steering wheel or whatever. So this is a Noble NB4. This happens to be the pro version. The regular version is the exact same. Uh, and you can see here that we have four wheel steering mixing, track mixing for tanks or tracked vehicles, drive mixing so that you can uh, have front and rear. So you can control and adjust the throttle if you have dual motors for like an MOA or a car that has dual motors, brake mixing. So if you have a braking system and then programmable mixes. Now, there are a lot of transmitters out there that handle mixing and they all do to, you know, probably have their own settings. I'm not familiar with all of them, but I am familiar with this. And um, it's basically as simple as plugging in your servo again into channel three and you can treat the um, channel three the exact same as a stock remote. So if you wanted to, you basically could have a switch set up and you can control your rear steering with that switch, right? Just like the stock remote. And some will have buttons, and when you push the button, it will go through each of the settings with a single button. We don't have it set up, but basically you hit the button and go left, hit the button and go center, hit the button and go right. Now that's not ideal. That's much harder to control, but if you have a three toggle switch, you could do something like that, just like the stock remote. If you have mixing, however, you're able to just basically go into, this is on the Noble again, but go into mixes, go to four wheel steering mixing, choose your channel. You want channel three or channel four, whatever you plugged into. It's gotta be set up to a, uh, a button and we already have it set up, so you would choose which button you want. And um, we actually have it set up to this button so that we can cycle through. So on the Noble, you can set up multiple different modes on how you cycle through uh, options on a screen. This one's just set to cycle, so we can go through each of our steering options and you can see it on the screen how the, the steering is gonna react. That's front only, that's rear only, that's crab walk basically, and that is uh, opposites, right? You turn, turning. So as you can see, front only, We'll hit the button again, rear only, hit the button again, crab walk, or sorry, this is turning, and then crab walk. Okay. We can also set up so that we go to a specific one, and I have those set up on these buttons here. So this front one will go straight to the turn, right? And if I hit it again, we go back to normal front, and then this back one will go straight to crab walk. And if I hit it again, we'll go straight back. And I can go between this way or this way, Well, that's a throttle button, but you get the point. So mixing is the ideal way to handle this. It gives you full proportional rear steering versus just channel three, right? If we go back, I can show you again. And on the stock remote, this is the downside, right? It's all left, all right. There's no way to adjust the trim. It just is, okay? But with mixing, you can go through and adjust your channel three trim, and you can even adjust your mix rate on this one, which means as I turn the front, the rear will turn less or turn more. So being able to just have fully proportional is ideal. But again, you have to have the transmitter for that. Okay. Funny enough, I don't have any rigs set up with this actually set up. This is the only rear wheel steering rig I have is this C10 and it's set up on a stock remote. So, and I love it. It is a blast and it's actually not that hard to control. We're off on a tangent here, but I basically drive like this. Right, and I'm able to switch the thing while I'm driving. And you can get an extended thing. I've seen people build little switches in here or, or knobs so you can hit the knob and it'll switch it or pull the knob while you're driving. Anyway, people get creative. Um, but again, the downside to that is no proportional steering. This is proportional steering. Another thing I wanted to point out on your transmitter, if you don't have mixing, but you do have like a, uh, a trim or a, uh, basically a, an analog style, it's not just on and off and it's not a three position switch, but it's actually similar to your steering where you can turn the knob. You may be able to actually set that to your steering as well. The only problem there is usually it's gonna be hard to center it perfectly as you're driving. You can center it obviously, but if you're turning it, you don't know where center is on these types of dials essentially. So just another option. Now there is one more option and there may be actually, there may be others out there, but I know of this one. It's called Bastens. B-A-S-T-E-N-S, -E we will show it. And basically this is just a little control module that will uh, work with two channel or three channel receivers. And you're able to uh, plug it in and using a series of back and forth, left, right, left, right steering, you engage crab walk mode or your you know traditional uh, steer, I guess. And you can do uh, basically front steer, crab walk, regular steer and rear only steer. So there's the four modes. 
The nice thing about this setup, if you don't have a transmitter that can do mixing, is that you actually have proportional steering, right? So this gives you the proportional front and rear steering. And uh, you don't have to worry about eating all left or all right. Now, I don't know how to, because I've never dealt with one of these. I don't know how to, you do trim on the rear only, but I assume there's a way to trim it. Um, if not, that would be a downside. But basically, these little things can do, uh, this one in particular, can do 4 volts all the way up to 13 volts. And like I said, if you just kind of leave it centered for a second and then left, right, left, right, it turns on, it switches the mode. And then left, right, left, right again, switches another mode. And you can get through each of the modes. You can also hook it up to your third channel, just like on the switch that we showed here on this remote. And you can, uh, you can't, you have to, it actually has to be a, I think it's just, I think they call it a binary. I can't remember the name right now, but it's basically on your third channel where you can flip the switch and it, it gives you left, right, center, right? It's not a, not a three position toggle, but you push the button and you get left, right, center. And basically that will switch through your different modes on your three channel, uh, transmitter with the Baston setup. So another cool thing that the Bastons has is what they call steering lock. Now, I think it only works on the third channel when you have a two position toggle, um, but it basically is kind of neat. It allows you to turn while well, you have four wheel steering, you can turn and while you're at partial turn, you can flip your switch and then control your front or whatever rear, whichever you switch to and the other wheel, like your rears will stay locked. So if you turn a little bit and your front and rear are turned and then you switch, you can move your front while your rear is still turned, right? So that's a pretty cool feature. And we're gonna actually just show a little bit of a video here from Bastins and uh, it shows you kind of what it's about. The computer will always start in the last mode remembered from your last run. In this case, we have four wheel steer control. If we let the transmitter center for three seconds, then wiggle the wheel combination, left, right, left, right within four seconds, watch the wheel switch mode. Now we have front only steer and the wheel is frozen at center. If we let it rest for another three seconds and give it another wiggle, Watch it to switch to crab, rear steer. Lastly, one more wheel wiggle brings it back to four wheel steer. Now let's move on to a more advanced setup. Here I have an axle wraith with a third channel toggle switch. The third channel gives me quicker mode switching on the fly. Four wheel steer, front only steer, crab walk, and rear only steer. The fun part is what we call wheel freeze. If I prefer to lock the position of the wheel wheel for better grip on a rock, I start with four wheel steering mode. Then turn the wheel to the desired location and flip the switch. Now I have full control of the front wheel locking the rear wheels. And the rear wheel will remain frozen. With the flip of the switch, the rear wheels go back to normal modes. I can perform the same wheel freeze function on the front wheel by turning the desired location, flipping the switch, and now I have full rear control, but the front is locked. Flip the switch, it goes back to the normal modes. Once you give it a try, you'll wonder, how did you crawl without it? Those are the options that I know of on uh, four-wheel steering and how to set it up. I'm sure there's some other ones out there, and I'm sure there's other companies out there making the little four-wheel steer modules. Um, but, yeah, it's it's not hard to do. If you want to just have the basic four-wheel steering with the stock remote, that's pretty easy. Again, just channel three. And even if you have an aftermarket transmitter, as long as you have a channel three with a three position sense, uh, setting, you, you can you can set it up easily as well. So I hope you got some great information from this video on how to get four wheel steering onto your rig and you find the right solution for you. Uh, if you've made it this far, put 4WS in the comments below. 4WS. S? S? I don't remember S in sign language. Either way, put it down there. And uh, also you can comment with uh, what kind of rig you would like to see four wheel steering on. And um, maybe Axial should release a rig with four-wheel steering. They've already got it. All the electronics are there. Anyway, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when the next uh, video is up. And uh, be sure to uh, share this in all the groups. And if anybody asks about four-wheel steering, you know where to send them. Just send them the link. All right, guys, get out there and run your trucks. Have fun. Don't break any expensive parts, though.